In this series of videos we're going to learn how to build a VEX tumbler using Autodesk Inventor. To begin with from the ribbon select new and from the pop-up we're going to select a standard assembly part which is labeled .iam. Select create and what we've now created is a new assembly part. Choose first of all to go file save. Save with whatever name that comes up first so in this case assembly 3. With your part saved First of all, we're going to choose from the ribbon the option to place a component. In the VEX Inventor Parts folder, which looks like this, we can find under metric a number of different folders. We're going to start with structure, so select structure. If you click on any of the parts, you'll receive a preview of what that part looks like. And we're going to open up the chassis rail, which is a 16 hole chassis rail here. Click once to create one part, right click and select OK to finish bringing parts in. This is our first uh, side chassis part. So from the ribbon select the free rotate tool and rotate this part around. What you can now do is place the bearings, so choose place. And if we move up the folders to the motion folder, within that we should find a bearing flat which looks like this. Open up and I'm going to create two of these, one, two. Right click and select OK. To begin with we're going to click on this metal part here and as you can see there are balloons which reference to the top surface and the bottom surface of these squares and these squares will allow you to fit circles so we have an insert function being created. So we're going to use this feature now. First of all select the uh, top balloon, hold down ALT and select it and we're going to match that to the corresponding balloon here on the bearing. Okay. Now if we click and hold this we can see we can drag this part so it's still not fully constrained. What we're going to do now is click back on the metal, select Alt, click on this balloon here and then match it to its corresponding balloon here. When we now click on the bearing that should now be fitted in place. Just going to tap the view cube to resize. What we're going to do now is repeat the same process again with this bearing. So again select the metal. We're going to choose to locate the top hole first. So we'll choose Alt and we'll click Select. Now what we've got here is again we've positioned this bearing in here. And again we'll repeat this process, the top bubble here to this bearing and that's complete. If we now to zoom out we can see we've now completed fitting two bearings to the chassis structure. What we're now going to do is bring in a couple of the colors. So we're now going to choose place and from the pop-up we're going to locate a couple of parts called shaft collars which is actually an assembly in itself. So click open, we're going to place two of these, right click and select OK. This time what we're going to do is we're going to constrain these to the central hole and from the ribbon to do this we're going to choose the constraint option choose insert from the, the type of constraint we're going to create and hovering over the color we're going to choose the outside bottom edge and the center to match to the top edge and the center of this bearing here and select OK. If we now move down and repeat the process what we now have is we now have two colors which can spin round but are located now in place rotate your model around to the other side and what we're going to do now is going to fit two spaces onto the holes where the shaft will go through before we place the wheels select place move up and into the structure folder and we're going to locate a 4.6 millimeter spacer select open and then bring two of these parts in to rotate your spacer to the right position select free rotate from the ribbon click on your part and drag and rotate it roughly into the right position and then right click and select OK. What we're going to now try and do is position this to sit directly in line with this position here. Choose constraint and this time what we're going to do is first of all we're going to choose mate I'm going to choose the top surface of the chassis rotate around and choose this surface of the spacer and select OK 
what we've now got is we've now got a spacer that will sit onto that surface but not located and what we're now going to do is again constrain only this time we're going to match the center of the hole to the center of this hole and select OK. To repeat the process again to the other side select free rotate and rotate the part around roughly to the right direction select constrain and to mate the top surface of the metal rotate round to see the other side of the spacer select mate and then to add a second constraint on there choose constrain select the center point of the spacer the center point of the bearing and this is now in position what we now have are the mechanisms in place to position some wheels now so choose place and this time we're going to locate the wheels so move up to the folder that says motion and we're going to be looking for a 5 inch wheel place two wheels right click and select OK and again using the constraint tool this time we're going to select insert and we're going to insert the center of this ring and its center line to corresponding on the spacer. If we click OK we can see that the wheel will now rotate but it's now joined onto the spacer. So let's repeat that again. Constrain, insert, we're going to match this part to this part and click OK. And what we should now see is we have the beginnings of half of that tumbler. As you can see the wheels will independently rotate round which is fantastic. What I'm now going to do is right click on this part, the metal part, and ground that part. So this will now lock that part in place so I can now freeform and free move the parts around to my uh, perfect position.